Coming up on Mountain News at 6, one Southern Kentucky high school participates in a drill preparing them for what to do in the event of an active shooter. And one Pike County community is mourning a man they say was larger than life. Plus, we are tracking chilly and soggy weather by this weekend. Those details on the way as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A Southern Kentucky high school closed for fall break was full of police officers and first responders today. Police in Laurel County trained for an active shooter situation, learning techniques and tactics for the unthinkable. WIMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to police who say planning for the unknown is difficult, but necessary. Dozens of police officers came to North Laurel High School Thursday. There's no students here as it's fall break. Well, you're always thinking that. You always hope it doesn't happen at your school, but you want to prepare as if it will. If there is someone said Police practice their stance to peeking into open doors where a person with a gun would likely be. I'm going to come out. I'm letting my partner peek what he can get. I'm working to my 90. Keeping the kids and staff in these schools safe is our number one priority, and we have to prepare for everything. The Laurel County school system has their own police force. It's the Laurel County Schools Police Department. They have a police chief. They have 18 officers that patrol the various public schools here in Laurel County. The school board put that into use to ensure an officer within every school. Today's activity trained them and other officers who would likely respond if a shooting happened. Obviously, it's chaos, but what we're trying to do is organize chaos. Uh, uh, get all the agencies on the same page with the same goal. It offers a message uh, of comfort and safety. You know, we're thankful for our Laurel County School Police Department. We've both got open doors. School leaders say teachers also go through state required active shooter training at the beginning of each school year. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Part of today's training involved making sure everyone can communicate with radios and determining the best entry point to the schools. A Knox County woman was arrested after police discovered suspected meth following a traffic stop. Earlier today, officers with the Corbin Police Department arrested 37-year-old Tammy Spicer of Gray. They say Spicer tried to give them a fake name, but they later figured out who she was. During a search of the vehicle, suspected meth and drug paraphernalia was found. Spicer faces multiple charges and was also served with three outstanding warrants. Officials are looking for two fugitives in one county, both named Tim. Officials with the 39th Judicial Circuit of the Commonwealth Attorney's Office are trying to find 26-year-old Timothy Knox and 47-year-old Timothy Alvin. Both men are wanted for a probation violation warrant out of Powell Circuit Court. If you have any information about where these men are, you're asked to con contact the Commonwealth Attorney's Office at 606-612-5066. The federal trial against former Commonwealth Attorney Ronnie Goldie has been delayed. It was originally supposed to start later this month, but now it's been pushed back to January. Goldie is accused of doing favors for a woman facing prosecution in exchange for nude photos of her. He was impeached and convicted back in March. The trial is now set for January 12th at 10 a.m. Corbin police need your help finding a person regarding a theft case. Take a look at your screen. The person was captured on surveillance video yesterday. The Corbin Police Department says a theft happened at a business in Corbin. If you have any information about the case, you're asked to contact the police department at 606-528-1122, or you can contact their text tip line at 606-215-6239, and information can be kept anonymous. Well, you can't beat the forecast this evening. Here's a live look across the mountains and we are dry under plenty of sunshine. Also tracking plenty of warm temperatures as well. We should be in the lower 70s. Most of us in the middle to upper 70s right now. And this is all thanks to that warm front that we talked about earlier. But right now we are dry thanks to high pressure that is parked over Kentucky. But as we zoom out, we are tracking our next weather system. This area of low pressure producing some severe weather over Nebraska, also Kansas and some snow 
snow this evening over Wyoming, also Colorado. We have no snow and no severe weather for our region, but those rain chances are going to increase as this weather system pushes off to the east. This evening, though, we are dry, also mild. Those temperatures in the middle to upper 70s, up to 76 in Irvine, 78 for Manchester, and 68 the cool spot over in Wise in southwest Virginia. But some cooler air is on the way as we are tracking some below average temperatures by Sunday, also next week. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve? Cameron, thank you. A lifelong firefighter in Pike County took his final ride through his community today, sparking a flood of memorials and messages from those he touched. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the big shoes left behind by Big Sid. Jeffrey Dean Lester, known as Big Sid, was a real life superhero. He's straight out of a comic book. Big Sid was an unstoppable force of care and change. Literal and figurative, you're never going to feel his shoes in this area. Earning his nickname through not only the size of his body, but the size of his heart. As when Sid was there, there was no worries. The first responder dedicated more than three decades to his community as a firefighter, an EMT, and more. Always one call away and rising from every fall. Well, I'm backing up. Now, all at once, the whole truck stops. I didn't know what happened. Looked, I hit Big Sid. He had stopped the truck dead. He went about two or three days. I went down and checked on him. I said, buddy, where you been? Why ain't you been out, man? You broke my ribs. So uh, that, that was a good one. Even that didn't keep him down long. But after years of stories and sharing, the public servant made his final call Thursday. It's going to take everybody in this town to be the person he was because he could be everywhere all at once and I don't know how. Leaving a big impact. Remembered by those he left behind as a friend to all. Sid's porch was where you went. Anybody was welcome. Everybody could sit there. A father to many. Yeah, he didn't understand uh, how many lives he actually had touched. And a fixture unlike any other. That was the kind of role he played for everybody. And as soon as you were there and you were SIDS, you were SIDS. I don't know if there's anybody else that can do that. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Fire Department President Charles McGuire says Big Sid was also a champion for the establishment of an ambulance service in Phelps, and they hope to keep pushing that project forward in his honor. We now know the funeral arrangements for a former well-known district judge. Kelsey Friend Jr. died yesterday at Pikeville Medical Center. He was also a former state representative. The visitation will be on Friday at 6 p.m. at the Lucas and Son Funeral Home in Pikeville. There will also be a church service there at 7 p.m. The funeral is set for Saturday at 11 a.m. at the New Beginnings Fellowship Church in Pikeville. Kelsey Friend Jr. was 77 years old. In Harlan County, people are coming together to show their support for the folks in Israel. Harlan Mission Outreach hosts their church services in the Village Mall parking lot, and now they are using that space to host a prayer service for Israel as a way for them to lift up everyone in the war zone. The pastor of Harlan Mission Outreach, Sean Daniels, says it's an important part of being a follower of Christ. Uh, we had a lady actually reach out to me the other night and ask if we would be interested in hosting a prayer service for the people of Israel and the entire situation that's going on over there at this time. And uh, we were, you know, I told her, yes, we'd be glad to do that because we have a need. The scripture actually tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we'll have much more from that service tonight at 11. Well, enjoy the warmer weather, also the sunshine, because we're tracking some gloomy and chilly weather later this week. All those details after this break.